You realize that Taxon is spelled backwards as Naxat? How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here in a regular series where I love to showcase games published by certain companies, and today it's all about Taxon for the NES. According to NESGuide.com, nine games from Taxon, some of my favorites are on this small list as well, but we're going to cover all of them in this video, we're going to rank them along the way, and that video starts right now. Eight eyes, oh my god, I love this game so much. Now, this game, calling this game a ripoff of Castlevania would be too polite. This game plagiarizes Castlevania. <laughs> <laughs> to, a score, to, a, to an extent, anyway. Not not 100%, but to an extent. How it looks, how you move, the staircases, the castles, the buildings, where you're going and everything. I do like how you can choose which area you want to go to first. And what makes this game interesting to me is it's you and your falcon. Now, my next-door neighbor and I play this game a lot because the second controller can control the falcon, which is pretty neat. They can fly around, swoop down, hit enemies, grab items. There are some enemies in this game you can't even kill. Your falcon has to kill them. One-player mode, you can actually control it pretty easily. It's easier to do it on a second controller, but you can control it with a one player, and uh, you're going to need to sometimes, because sometimes you need to have the Falcon like fly way up to hit the switch, go through the door, the switch is too far away, the, you know, hit the switch, two seconds later the door closes. You know, things like that, little puzzle elements. I really like that about this game. There's a few items you can pick up, like an ice ball or a fireball, or you know, something like that too. Not a lot going on with that uh, mode anyway. But why it's called Eight Eyes, because the Eight Eyes are the eight gems in this game. And once you collect all the gems, you have to place them on this pedestal, that's when the door opens up, you win the game. In each level, there's a little clue. One of those kind of like puzzle games that says like, oh, red is next to white. And then white is, you know, three away from black. And you have to like, you know, I remember writing down like all the clues and then kind of like putting them together, you know, very early. This is like, you know, 30 years before Professor Layton or anything like that. It's one of those after the fact things. So when I first heard about that, I didn't know that actually how I have to the final element was a puzzle. But before you even get to that, you got each world, you got each little area that you have to go through. You got a boss at the end of it. I don't show it in this video, but when you defeat the boss, the password screen is you and the boss are like having tea and like your skeleton waiter brings you the drinks and everything. I, I just thought that was pretty cool. Huge fan of Eight Eyes. It's one of my uh, recommended type games. Um, I'm giving this game an A. Burai Fighter, I'm pretty sure it's called Burai Fighter, uh, but this game, very, very cool. It reminds me a lot of like sidearms, remember sidearms? And this was like the NES version. I love the fact that like you can hold a certain direction and hold the attack button. So while you're firing, you'll stay, you know, if you're like shooting upward, you can still scroll and shoot upward or, you know, forward and you that way you can, you know, maneuver around the other bullets while still aiming forward and everything. Great game, a lot of power-ups, uh, great graphics for the time. Really, really fun game. Um, don't need to say much more than that. I'm also giving this game an A. Oh, Fist of the North Star. Now, before I was at the height of my otakudom in the mid to late 90s, my introduction to Fist of the North Star was this Nintendo game. My friend had it. And I just thought it was weird, because like first you do the little kick. I love that Fist of the North Star kick with the sound and everything. But then when you punch an enemy, they explode. Of course, I didn't realize or what was going on until I saw the anime much later. I was like, ah, oh, that's why they exploded in the game. Okay. Oh, man. This game, this game's super rough. This is, I mean, there's like three or four Fists of the North Star games for the Famicom in Japan. I think there's three of them. And this game should have also stayed in Japan with those other ones. It's, um, it's, it's, it's really rough to play, um, even if you're a fan. Uh, it's just like, like, why did you release this game? Out of all the other great games that you could have released uh, here in America, why this one? Well, I mean, they did and can't do anything about it, so uh, the, the, the legacy lives on. And the fact that we have a Fist of the North Star game for the NES from Taxon, what are you gonna do? I'll, give, I'll, I'll at least put it as a D. It's not that it's unplayable. It's just, man, you have to want to play it. And much like the character from Fist of the North Star who touches an enemy and they explode, you can have that same power by touching that subscribe button to make my channel explode. I ask this because more than half of the people who watch my channel, including maybe even you, aren't subscribed yet. And the statistics prove that every time. So do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. I love doing videos like this and I always got a new one coming up. G.I. Joe is the real American hero. There are two G.I. Joe games for the NES. I already covered one of them when I did my Capcom video. If you haven't checked that out yet, maybe check that one out right after this video. And even though the other one's from Capcom, King Capcom, I prefer the one from Taxon more on the NES. Now, they're not both the same game. I think the Taxon one came out first, and then Capcom released the second one. Both of them are great games. 
Um, I just prefer this one from Taxon. I think it looks great. I love that the uh, the trees and all that have like animation to them. A lot of animated stuff on screen. You choose who you want to play as. You got Duke, you got Snake Eyes. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of rock and roll. Everyone loves Snake Eyes and Snake Eyes is great too, but come on. I mean, it'd be nice if they had Shipwreck on here, but what are you gonna do? It'd be super awesome if they had Sergeant Slaughter on here. Punch enemies, use your items, use your weapons. Uh, bosses are cool. Uh, you know, the bosses are creative and you know, they're fun. Great game, great, uh, great shooter, great action game for the NES. I'm giving this game an A. And from G.I. Joe to Low G, man. G standing for gravity. Uh, they call this game Low G, man, because you can jump really high. I mean, the dude from Fist of the North Star jumps higher. They didn't call it Fist of the North Star Low G, man. I don't know. So in Low G, man, I don't know, dude. It was just like, you can shoot the enemies and they freeze. And then from there, you can stab them and they explode. This game was kind of hyped up for a little bit there. For a few reasons. I remember seeing it in Nintendo Power and all that. Never owned it. Um, don't have any nostalgic for it. I do have some friends who really, really like this game. I think it's good. I think it's really good. It's just one of those games like with Power Blade on my Taito video, it's missing something and I don't know what. It even has the gimmick of jumping higher. It has the gimmick of having your stabby thing and you can freeze enemies and stab them and stuff like that. What's missing about this game? And maybe the answer is nothing. Maybe I'm the one who's missing from this game. I'm putting this game as a B. It's really, really good. It really is. It's just, man, what's, what? I don't know what, I don't know. You tell me. Come on, man, what's up with Magician for the NES? This game's supposed to be awesome. You're supposed to play as a magician. But when you first play this game, you're running errands. You're like mailing people's letters and you know, you're trying to do things and there's a constant scroll of text that you're so like, you're trying to play the game, but you're always reading something too. This game, and I rank all these games from my personal experience, my opinions, what I went through when I played them, whether I've beaten them or not. And I've beaten many of these, even with the Game Genie, just to see how the story goes and all that. This game, I couldn't get into it because I'm just like, I need the action right now, man. It's called Magician, even the, 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 the label is bright pink with lightning bolts and all that. And, and I'm over here mailing letters. Now, I know that there's a lot more to this game, of course. Especially any game for the NES where I just need, like, I just need a jump button and an attack button. But when it gives me all these stats and figures, like, yeah, this much food, this much water, this thing carries more water, you have three drinks left in your flask. Um, there's some puzzle elements later on, too, like where you're walking across these blocks and things are falling or reappearing, disappearing, and stuff like that. There's more to this game. There really is, once you get past the first little initial stuffs. But man, even from there, it's still not enough to hold me glued. I, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, so I don't, and I hit the power off, and I pop in a good game. So what happens when I play this game? I'm putting this game as a D just because, hey, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool, and there's something to it that's pretty unique for an NES game. But man, you have to want to play this game. Mappy Land may be in one of my top five games that surprised me the most. When I first saw it, I saw the graphics. Um, I'm familiar with Mappy the arcade game because I'm older than Sand. I'm older than my birthday. I'm old enough to be Santa Claus' father. I remember playing Mappy in the arcade and I loved it. And when I saw this one, I was like, oh, they made Map. They made they turned it into a kid's game. Aw, how cute. This game's super, super awesome. I love this game. I really do. You ever play Super Smash Brothers? You play as Pac-Man and then like the, the, the double jump is like the little, the trampoline that kind of disappears and goes away. Those trampolines came from Mappy. And on each stage, you collect all the items and move on to the next screen. And there's different levels. There's like a Western level, a jungle level. There's, um, you know, like a haunted level, you know, like at nighttime and stuff like that. A few worlds in this game, um, there's not a lot of them, but it's cool because you also get all these items along the way too to deter you from the cats and as well as like the like boss cat who's also following you or some, some boss guy, you know, the, the, the bigger guy, the guy who's not just like all the other cats. Whoever that is. But you know, like the first world you're collecting cheese, there's a level where you're collecting baseballs, there's one where you're collecting like engagement rings. As simplistic as this game looks, as cute as this game looks, there's still a bit of a challenge to it. And it's a good enough challenge for me. Yes, kids can play it too, but then me, Again, super old. So old, I remember when they only had four of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Super fun game, can't recommend it enough. I'm giving this game an A. It's not quite an S, um, as, as much as I hyped it up. I like to reserve that S for these super, super, super special games. Um, but this game is really, really good, and you really should check it out. I think it's great. Mystery Quest is an interesting one because I'm not exactly sure where I'm supposed to go, what I'm supposed to be doing. It looks like it could be cool. It looks like it could be like an adventure island or something like that. It looks fun, right? Now this game looks like a kid's game and I think it was supposed to be a kid's game, but it has that difficulty level too. That, not really a difficulty level, but you're just like, you just get stuck 
And you're just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Like going somewhere, I don't know what I'm doing. You should need to want to know what you're doing because you're going somewhere, right? Because it's scrolling somewhere and you're going in places. But then it turns into one of those games where it's like, you need keys and stuff, and you find the door, but you don't have the key. You don't know where the key is. It's like, oh, come on. Got to backtrack. <laughs> you know? Um, it's... Uh, I'll put this game as a C. It, it could be... There could be more to it. Star Soldier will always have a special place in my heart. It was one of the first games I purchased using my own money. We had a KB Toy Store, KB Toys and Hobby, and they had Star Soldier in overstock for like 20 bucks. I was like, oh my god, I actually have 20 bucks. I can buy this game right now. And I did. And my friends did too, so we would all play it and, you know, challenge each other's high scores and stuff like that. And it plays like a great shooter. It plays like a simplistic shooter for the NES, but it's super smooth compared to some of the other shooters on the NES. And Star Soldier, they've had this game you know, through other systems and other consoles, you know, to the, for the TurboGrafx-16 uh, and beyond. Um, so the Star Soldier's been around a long, long time. And uh, this one on the NES, simplistic, yes, but it plays really well and plays pretty smoothly too. And I appreciate that about a shooter, especially for shooters anyway. I still like there's other shooters out there that are, I think that are better. This game still has a lot of dear memory in my heart for, again, being that game that I bought myself uh, during a time where I had to rely on birthdays and Christmases to actually purchase games. I rented a lot of games, but you know, when it came to actually owning a game, few and far between for me growing up. I'll give this game a C. It's pretty, pretty good. Nine games from Texan, but there's some great ones on this list. I've been doing this series for a while now. There's always a new one coming up, and I've done so many of them in the past, so make sure you check out the playlist and binge it. Until then, and until then, we'll see you soon.